Even with my video lights pointing into my fat boy safe, it's still pretty dark in here. I can't really see much into the top shelf. Like a lot of safes, it comes with these two little battery operated motion activated lights, but I found them to be completely unreliable. A lot of times I have to sit in there and I have to wave my hand over them and they shed just a little bit of light in the safe. It's just not enough. But I'm gonna show you how to go from a dark safe to that in about 20 minutes or so of work and about $30. This is what you're gonna need. Each is sold separately and I've got each linked in the video description. You're gonna need the lights, you're gonna need a power pack, you're gonna need the motion sensor, and you're gonna need good quality T-pins. I recommend the Dubro brand of T-pins because they're gonna be strong enough for what we wanna do with them and you'll see what I mean in a minute. The LEDs are actually on a metallic ribbon and they are sticky back, though that's not gonna to adhere to the felt inside a safe. That's why we need the T-pins. These are especially cool because you can actually cut them at every few inches to the length that you need and you can even splice them together with other ribbons of LED. You get one set of reconnectors as well as an extra AC power cord in this in with these lights, but we're not gonna use any of these. This is actually gonna be right about what we need to do up across the top, down the other side and across the bottom on my fat boy. This motion sensor is a perfect example of why you need to carefully read Amazon reviews, even when they're bad reviews. There are a bunch of one-star reviews from people who don't know how to use this because this comes set from the factory with a three-second activation timer, meaning that once it sees movement, it keeps the lights on for about three seconds and that's it. Then it shuts itself off and waits for another activation. That's really inconvenient. What's also inconvenient is it doesn't come with any instructions, but luckily by reading the Amazon reviews, I learned how to properly use this and then it becomes very quickly a five-star piece of equipment. All you have to do is pop off the back and you don't even need any special tools. Right there, that's your timer adjustment screw and you lefty loosey back it all the way out and that will go to a six minute activation. Meaning that once you open the safe door, it's gonna see that motion and then it's gonna keep the light on for six minutes. Of course, if you're in a safe longer than that, you didn't just wave your hand over it and then it will turn back on. But that's plenty of time to get in and out of the safe for your ordinary administrative tasks, if you will. And it doesn't matter that it's gonna be on for six minutes and, and five of those minutes, the door's gonna be closed again because they're LEDs. They just don't take up a whole lot of power. So that's why I have it maxed out. The power pack also comes with an extra part that we're not gonna need, but you might wanna keep it around. This is basically a stubby version of this cable right here. You would splice in the cut LED here, and then that gives you an extra power port for plugging into a power pack, but the LEDs already come wired for power, so we're not gonna need that. Just looking at the T-pins, you might think you know how we're gonna use them, but I bet you don't, because we do need to modify them a little bit for a trick that I figured out. What we're gonna do is take some wire snips and snip off the short section on the one side, on the underside. Yes, wear safety glasses and it might fly across the room. So now we are left with that. Watch what we can do with this. So of course we could just run these about like this every so often, but that's not really a secure hold. By snipping that little short piece off, we actually can pop that on to the ribbon, just like that. And these Dubro brand T-pins actually have enough of a gap. Other cheap ones don't that it slides right on there without having to bend anything. And now all we're gonna do is push that into the cement board and it's gonna hold it in place. That is pretty slick. So before we do the installation, I've gotta prepare a number of these T-pins and have them ready. But before I make all of those T-pins, I am gonna plug everything together and make sure it works. Power pack male goes into motion sensor female, motion sensor male goes into LED female, and now I'm gonna plug this in. 
One of the things you'll notice is that there is a several second delay from when the power pack gets power and the LEDs come on. That's just the way the power pack energizes. Don't worry about that. It's not something you're gonna notice when you open a safe anyway, but it looks like it's broken at first, it's not. One last thing we wanna test, we wanna test the motion sensor because when you plug this in for the first time, it's gonna energize regardless. There we go. <laughs> awesome, this is gonna be fantastic. Back there is my power. I'm gonna plug it in there. I'm gonna run the power cord to there. That's where I'm gonna start my run of lights right in the bottom and of course we're gonna to have to deal with the hinges in two places but it's actually gonna be easier than you might think and I'm gonna run it all the way up to the top all the way across the top there come down the left side all the way down and then I'm still gonna have some that I'm gonna be able to run along the bottom right on the inside here and that's gonna give me a ton of light it's gonna be super easy this is where things go fast I'm gonna remove this because I'm not gonna worry about dehumidifying my safe while it's open. And we'll plug it back in when we're done. Pop this on at the first LED. And stick that right in the corner. We're already at our first hinge. It's actually gonna be pretty easy because we can just tuck this in behind the plate. It's easier to stick the T-pin in first and then hook the light strip. Hardest part of this job is getting this on video for you to see, but I already got it started there. It goes into the pocket right here, and I've got it run up, and then I'm actually even using the pocket of the hinge to hold this in place here. I'm gonna pin it here and just run it on up to the next hinge super fast. So you get the idea. I've found that pushing the pins in first and slipping the LED ribbon in place is easiest. Though even then, you kind of have to search for an angle that the T-pin will push into the super hard cement board. There's no science to this. You just need to put a T-pin in every six to eight inches or so, so you don't get any sags in the LEDs, and then dress the ribbon so it's pointing towards the back of the safe. I use the joints between the sides to my advantage whenever possible, and once the lights are tucked in place, they're going nowhere unless you want them to. Awesome, fantastic, it worked. You're not gonna believe this, but right down here, that's all that was left on the end of the light. So I kind of have a double strand to there and I, and I tucked in the, the tail that they leave for you to be able to wire the AC power on the other side in the crack in the, the firewall here, the fireboard here. And then I just tacked up the motion sensor I got it off of the floor so I wouldn't smash it putting anything in and out of the safe and I put it facing sideways facing towards the biggest part of the opening so that it would see light directly on the front of the sensor as the door was opened <laughs> and it worked because that's what it is it's not so much a motion sensor really as it is a light sensor it senses changes in light and when it sees the change in light then it triggers the switch Oh, wait till you see what this looks like. Oh my gosh, fantastic. Look at that. That's beautiful. You can really see all the way into the back shelf, the, the back of the top shelf, in all of the side shelves and, and that side there. Of course, it's a little darker here because this top blocks some of the light, but I'm still getting good light down at the bottom. Actually, my eyeballs, it's not as dark in there as it looks on camera. That is super easy, and it really is not that pretty on the inside. Let me show you. You can see there's nothing special about how I have those lights running. It's really, it's not like a pro job. It doesn't need to be a super pro job. It just needs to do its job, and it's doing its job really, really well. That's going to stay out of the way of me moving stuff in and out of the safe. You can see the nice turn there, and it's giving me great light. I didn't have to make any backers, because some people, they'll make backers uh, that look really nice. They'll run at every corner. They will, they'll cut, and they'll run 
one of those splice wires and then they'll cut again. There's no need to do that. I didn't cut this at all. I just wound this off of the wheel, the reel, and put it in place. And you know, I had to stop, stop videoing because the camera was just getting in the way. But this really, this was a 15 minute job, less what I had to do to get you the video that you're seeing right now. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. I got everything linked in the video description so you can get exactly what you see here. Set up your safe exactly like this in a very short amount of time. Actually, it took me more time to clip the T-pins than anything because that's, that's just a little tricky to do, but worth the effort. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can see the links right here. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like this easy do-it-yourself safe lighting kit. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.